In this lecture, I'd like to talk about a very important concept in physics known as torque, which is given or represented by the Greek letter tau. Now, before we get into torque, let's recall what the first and second law of motion tells us about the motion or movement of objects. So let's take this object, for example, and let's place it down on a surface. Now, according to our first law of motion, this object will remain stationary, will remain in its current state of motion, unless a net force acts on my object. So, if I apply a net force at any point on my object, according to my second law of motion, my object will begin to accelerate in the same direction as my net force applied. So, if my net force is going along the x direction, my object will move along the x direction. Likewise, if my net force is pointing along the y direction, in this case an invisible force, the force of gravity, my object will go from stationary to a moving object because our force will accelerate that object in a direction perpendicular to the ground. Likewise, if I look at the z-axis, which goes this way, I can also move my object along the z-axis if I apply net force along that same axis. And likewise, our object can move along any axis in between the xyz plane, and this type of motion is known as translational motion. So, we just basically said that a net force created on an object will cause that object to translate, to move via translational motion. But note that that's not the only type of motion possible. There is also motion known as the rotational motion. It's basically when you take an object and that object moves along a circular path. For example, take my hand for instance. If I take my hand and, my, and I tell my muscles to apply force on the bone and move my bone this way, my object will begin to rotate in this fashion. And if I'm capable of rotating my hand 360 degrees around, which by the way I'm not, it could only go probably to 110 degrees, I will make a full circle. So I, I'll basically go like this, and then like this, and I'll make a full, a full circle. So rotation is basically the movement of an object around a circular fashion. So a door, for example, rotates because as you push the door, that door will uh, rotate. For example, if you take this marker and fix this marker along some point, the point here, and I apply force this way, my marker will begin rotating because I'm applying a force. So, we basically said the following so far. According to the second law of motion, a net force will cause an object to move with translational motion as well as rotational motion. Because look, rotational motion means that if I apply force, my object will begin to rotate, will begin to move via rotation. So, so it is true that if I apply force on my object, my object can in fact begin to rotate. So, we just said translational motion is created by a net force, which is given by the second law of motion. Basically, we sum up all the forces along some axis, say the x-axis, and if our force is not is not zero, our object will begin to move like it did in this case. My force was non-zero, my object began to accelerate with some acceleration A, where the mass is the mass of the object. Now, I want to ask the following important question. Is the relationship between our force and the rotational motion the same relationship that we have between translational motion and force? In other words, we saw that our translational motion depends only on our force applied, on the net force applied. Well, I want to ask the following question. Does rotational force depend strictly on the force, or are there other factors that cause our rotational motion to change or to differ? And it turns out that the following is true. Rotational motion is also created by net force, but the way in which my object rotates depends on other forces. For example, let's take this system here, for instance, let's say, let's say this black line is my door and this brown dot is basically my hinge on which my door is held. So my door rotate along this axis. So this is my hinge and when I move my door, my door will rotate in the same way that my hand will rotate. So if I take my door and apply force on my door, my door will begin to open and close and it will begin to move around this hinge. 
Now I want you to do the following experiment and this experiment can easily be done at home and you can try it if you don't believe me. Suppose you take the door and let's apply a force perpendicular to our axis of rotation so this axis and this force make a 90 degree uh, angle and let's take the same force applied here and then apply it next to the, uh, next to the hinge. So we're applying our force where our doorknob is and then we're applying the same force where our hinge is and we want to observe if our rotational motion differs and in fact it will differ. If I apply a force at this point my door will begin to accelerate, will begin to move with some angular velocity. If I apply the same force here, my door will not move with that same angular velocity. In fact, it will move slower, assuming my two forces at this point and this point are exactly the same. And that means the following, that our motion, rotational motion, does not only depend on my force applied, but it also depends on the distance between our force, where our force is applied, and our hinge, where our object rotates, the, uh, the uh, point about which our object rotates. So this distance is known as R. It's known as the lever arm or the moment arm. And our, and our equation is actually torque. Torque is what we use when we rotate things, not the force. And that's because force is not the only factor that will affect the way our object will rotate. It's also the angle as well as our distance r. So once again, in this case, in this example, our angle is 90 degrees. So this angle is basically the angle that the, per, that the um, axis of rotation makes with our force. So in this case, the angle is perpendicular, it's 90, and because sine 90 is 1, this is simply 1, so we get torque is equal to force times our displacement r, our lever arm r. So for this case, this is our force, uh, our torque. For this case, this is our torque. So in this case, we apply a force at an angle, at an angle that is theta to our axis of rotation. So we basically use the same distance r, but now instead of using sine 90, we use sine theta. So for example, if this was 30, we'd use sine 30, which is simply one half. So for this experiment, where our angle is 30 degrees, we plug in 30, and we get torque is equal to force times the displacement or the lever arm multiplied by one half because sine 30 is in fact one half. So once again, translational motion and rotational motion differ in the sense that net forces create translational motion while net forces and the distance of the lever arm create rotational motion.